Uh, Pittsburgh White Schwartz here with Blue from Batman Ninja. So, uh, Andy, kick us off here. All right, we got Catman, Reliable Ally. <laughs> Catman. Double Zero Brainstormer at the beginning Cat of the climax phase. Oh, <laughs> you <what>? said Catman. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Catman, the beginning of your climax phase, she's one of your characters that get 500 power. So, the Remy effect. A rest self search or salvage brainstorm. Yeah, this is literally Remy. This is the same card. It actually is just Remy. We love Remy. Dude, good. We Wait, love from uh from Bang Dream? Yeah, yeah. Remy yeah, yeah. Remy Reen from Bang Dream. As Kasumi calls her. But yeah, this is this is just Remy, but she's blue, which is and she's a weapon, so she only gets weapon cards. Oh no, it's characters. You can run this in anything. You can put this in anything. You can put, run this in any deck. Only grabs characters. Great, incredible, amazing in this set. That is an A plus, double plus brainstorm because it can grab anything, and it's a rest self, which I think. Don't the don't the villains have a brainstorm too? I'm assuming it can grab anything. Also. Uh, it's a Harley. It can, it's a rest too. Maybe it can only grab villains. I really don't know. Um, I don't. But yeah, it can grab anything. So, and we love Remy. Five hundred power buff. Very important. All your things need reverse. Makes it even more important. It's not dead in your back row. Give it anywhere. It doesn't need to be behind something. So yeah, this is just a super simple self tap brainstorm. It's really good. That's why it's. I think it's. Fifteen dollars, rightfully so. One of the only good zeros, like uh, double rare zeros, or uh, no, not double rare, but I mean like higher rarity zeros. I think I think Batman has a a decent amount of good zeros, actually. Yeah, yeah, it, it's. I guess I guess a lot the of them are like spread say. across. They're, they're spread across weapon and villain though, so you can't run them all in the same deck. I I guess. But this one you can. You can run this in anything. You just but... pop it in. You can't grab it with your stuff in the villain deck. But I don't know. Why are you searching a brainstorm? That's what brainstormers are for. Well, what are that? Those things where you don't find them. <laughs> but oh, you're just destined to lose those games. It is uh, notable that like this is salvage, constant salvage access, and the combo searches the Shimakaze search. So you kind of get your salvage and your search. Which is pretty cool. Same lineup that like Revy does the wind combo. Everything else salvages, and then this searches. But they also have better Brainstormer options, but... Yeah, Remy's a good card. Let's just move on to more interesting ones. Okay, Sengoku, Batman. Uh, oh, this card's amazing. Uh, when this card is played on the stage from your hand, put the top two cards of your deck in your waiting room. If there's a climax revealed among these cards, choose one of your characters, and that character gets 1,500 power until end of turn. And then it rickies for a weapon character from your waiting room. Note that it is not restricted by level. It can grab anything. That's ridiculous. And it goes to your hand. It doesn't go to the field like all the other stupid rickies they've been printing. Uh, this, well, this, you can, oh, you can grab any level with that. This is mill on a stick, which is always good. 1,500 power is better than other... Well, I guess that's, that's the same as... Uh, what is it? New Start Saya. New Start Saya is the same mill power buff, but then the other one's a drop salvage, but this is a Ricky salvage for anything? A Ricky, a Ricky that salvages any cost. Yeah, this is Saya on crack. Have this they is... printed that effect before? Um, They have printed Rickies that grab anything that are, well, anything in the decks you would play them in. They're restricted, but the restriction doesn't mean anything. Um... Like, I don't know, you're already putting cards in your waiting room with uh, Catwoman. So, like, you have four of this. You have four Catwoman Brainstorm. You, like, mill. You see, you hit one and see two cards you want in your waiting room. You play the other one. You just grab it. Ricky's super good. Sets you up for one combo. Like, I don't Like, ugh. This is so, like, incredibly amazing. Utility zero. And it can buff itself. So it can swing for 35. It's the only card you play. You don't even have to feel bad about it. Like, you throw it out there, it's the only zero you have. It grabs your combo for next turn. And then, like, you hit a climax. And, uh, grab what, like, clear a lane. It's, like, amazing. This ridiculous. This is probably the best card in the set. Yeah, like, th this is the best standalone single. Standalone card. This is the best single card based on no other card. I, I, I think this is, like, S. 
This is an S tier card, straight up. This card's absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's also worth uh, 18 right now on JK. Yeah. So pretty, uh, yeah. pretty valuable. I think it's the most expensive single double rare. I don't For think... sure, a, a milling Ricky. That's like a four of in like every weapon deck. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing, amazing card. I think every Batman weapon list you run this at four. Like, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Always relevant. Always relevant, Ricky. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay, next card. Uh, it's you, Paul. All right, yeah. This is just Catwoman. It has a climax combo. Gets plus 15,000 once played, so it's at, what, 6? Yeah, 6K. Six yeah, What's it on reverse? Uh, search your deck on reverse. Oh, uh, well, only a weapon character, not any character. But that, it's still... I don't know, that's still pretty good. Generic Shimakaze searcher. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, this is this and the trial deck one are really your only options. The other options. I think the, are I think the trial deck card's better. To be honest. What the trial deck one sits at fifty five. This one goes to six. The, the trial deck sits at fifty five, or, and this goes to six, which is kind of an irrelevant threshold. Yeah. Well, I think the Batman's better for two reasons. I think, I think the on reverse effect of drawing two, dis ditching one, is better than searching one. I think it depends on how selective you need to be, and I don't think Batman needs to be selective. I think at that selective. stage of the game, you don't need to be that selective. Well, I don't think you need to be selective the... at all. Like, in Batman, I don't think you care as much about selectivity in Batman, based on what I've seen, at least. I think the other big thing to note, too, is you can use the Hita, the Hita Bat Clan card that we haven't got to yet to pop your Batman... Yeah. back to your hand and use it again and plus again off of it where this is a cat woman and can't be hit by it and there's not even an argument for it's on a better trigger because they're both on book they're both 1k1 books the, the fact that the like i think that's going to be a recurring theme for a lot of the playable cards in this set is that and it becomes instantly more playable because of the heat of bat clan yeah because you can pop it back to your hand you can deny reverses and then with the Combo effects, you can just combo again. Yeah. I still and think this is... I, I, I'm betting the hero deck is going to be... Um, they're probably running the Sunder finish. Or they might be. And that's off of a blue gate, I think. Yeah. They're both... Like both could... the finishers are blue gate. Yeah, it's, it's very realistic that you could... Level 1 combos back to back. Yeah. Um... I don't know. If if you want selectivity, I think you can just drop it in. But yeah, it doesn't get popped by Bat Clan. It will sit at 45 and get reversed by your opponent on the following turn. You don't have options to protect it, unlike the Prowl deck Batman. Um, God forbid the demo deck remains legal, and then you can run like one Batman that's just no reverse draw one. And like I think that's I saw a list that uh, Connor put somewhere in one of the discords and he was like theory crafting like three or two of the trial deck one and then one or two of the demo deck one so like you have options for no reverse or on reverse which was pretty funny like you just have options on the same card but yeah i don't know i think this is worse than the trial deck but it's it's fine i think i think i gave the trial deck one a b plus so i'm just giving this one a b it's it's worth noting that this card can reverse on its own with its climax combo, but the Batman you're probably gonna need a some something in the back row. But there are there is a married life that will help get you there. So yeah, I agree with you guys. B. Chimikaze. I think it's funny how she looks in the climax card compared to like her 2D anime style in the regular card. Yeah, the when they're not the three D, the fact that the all the other cards around them are, it's very off putting. Like looking at it. <laughs> very weird. Alright. Moving on. All Batman right. Ninja. Who this? The is... one and only. The namesake of the set. Who is this? This is me? 
Or me. It's you, yeah. I just went. Is my mic muted? Like, did I, I just set a whole intro for it? Did you not hear it? Yeah. Oh, I have the wrong. I have the wrong thing up for this. It's off a of blue gate. Uh. Okay, so it's off a of blue gate. Anyway, Batman Ninja. He has five hundred power for every other weapon character. Hand. You get to look at three cards from the top of your deck. Choose one and put it in your hand. Um, and at the end of his card's attack, if the Dark Knight is in your climax area and all of your other characters are weapon, you do stand him and he gets 2,000 power. Yep. Pretty good digs for his own combo. I love it. Yeah, the fact that, and again, it is off a of pants. It's off a of blue gate, um, which is also a 1k1. Blue 1k1. Uh, so what is it? It sits at 11... And it goes to thirteen, fourteen on climax play. So fourteen when after it stands, same cost, digs for its own climax. Yeah, this is this is good. It's a good finisher. You can play it into open lanes, but you don't want to. Uh but still, like this is a very, very usable finisher off a of good finisher climax trigger. I think the Sunder finisher is probably stronger. Well, the, but... the Sunder Finisher requires you to... Ru There's a reason why this card will be better than the Sunder Finisher. And that's this is a lot more splashable and what... The Sunder cards on your deck suck. Building. The Sunder cards suck. That's the problem. They're really bad. It's not like Gurren Logan where the Sunder cards are great and they field compress you with markers. Like, the Sunder cards in this set blow. So I think you're going to see this. This will be the Finisher. Or somehow you're playing Gate with Harley in this deck. Somehow. Uh, somebody will figure it out. But, you know, I think this is, this is the finisher that you play. And it is playable. It doesn't need reverse. Uh, heavy cost. It, yeah, the, oh, it doesn't need reverse, you're right. It's just at the end of this card's attack, so you build the stuff. That's the best way. That's like the best cost. Because I've been playing more, like, I've been messing more with Summer Pockets recently, and their restander combo feels like that. It feels great, those end-of-attack condition things, because you don't need a lot of... It's more stock efficient. You can just tap out completely for it. Yeah. It's like um the Claudine from Revue. Yeah. It's at the end of this card's attack. I think that makes it great. I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it an A-. minus. This is the finisher that you run in the blue deck, for sure. I think Sunder is worth messing with, but the cards are too bad. Because you need to run so many multiples of them to consistently hit Sunder. Because, like, I don't know. I've seen Zach with Sunder even running, like, basically four ofs of every card he still whiffs sometimes. Which, I don't know. Like, that can be pilot error, but, like, still, it's still hefty. Because you want to refresh. You don't want to, like, refresh poorly just to keep Sunder targets in your waiting room, you know? True. This does let you play out your game more organically rather than trying to good synergy with the trial deck finisher. The trial the or the trial deck combo because that lets you ditch climaxes. So you can throw everything away. Yeah, the fact that this doesn't require a reverse makes it an A for me. I think. Yeah. the The only th reason I gave it an A minus is because restanding in open lanes is like objectively terrible. Uh, unless your opponent's out a lot, in which case it's great. <laughs> so, like, you know, but still, it can do it. It can do it. doesn't heal, but it digs, and I think that's equivalent when you're trying to finish your opponent off. And it lets you compress better. So it heals you in a different way. It can grab you your red hood, which is just a burn five. So, The red log. The red log, boy. But, yeah, let's move on. Ripping through these. Batman, Missionary Disguise. God, this art. Uh, assist, all of your characters in front of this card get 500 power. Pay two, rest this card, search for a weapon character. Ugh. That's Batman? That's Batman. I guess he is wearing a disguise. Yeah. He's looks very like disguised. like some temple monk. It looks like a completely different 3D model. Like they just grabbed, look like him. <laughs> they grabbed the like generic 3D model 
like the generic this monk three D model. This dude's straight up a background character. Yeah, that's <laughs> this is right. a background no, character, and he got on a rare. That's how good, this is that's Batman, how good no. his uh, his disguise. His disguise is so good. But yeah, I don't know. Pay to rest search is like a bad act, uh, especially when your Catwoman uh, brainstorm gives spot five hundred, which is like I don't know. Usually about as impactful as in front of. It depends. Depends what you're trying to do with it. I think this is worse when you're running alongside the married life, whereas you can run a married life and a Catwoman, and you're, that's a great back row. So. Well, to me, this is just Giraffe Jr. So. It's so much worse than Giraffe. Yeah, it. Well, at least it gives 500 power. I don't know. I think this card, this card's bad. Bad card. Uh, pay to rest search is like, I don't know, usable. I guess. I guess. It's a card it, to at remember. Least it gives 500 power. A card to remember for draft, I guess. <laughs> pay to search, real good. It is a very good disguise, though. Very good. 10 out of 10 disguise. Any thoughts, Paul? Hold on, I was looking up. So, this card's a rare, but it's also in the demo deck, mm -hmm. I guess. So, so, does the demo deck just have a bunch of the same what, cards? What's the demo deck's effect, if you can read it for me? Hold on, I'm going down to it. Uh, this one's just the assist. It doesn't have the extra part of it. So it is just objectively worse than the demo deck yes. one. Okay. Yeah, it's, okay. Well, it's better than the demo. Deck. Oh, objectively. The demo better. deck one just does the. Yeah. Okay, so it's bad. Bad card. Yep. 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 Next. All right, I'm up. Right. Oh, you, Paul. Catwoman Sly Deal. If this card is on your stage... Oh, this card turns into a villain? Okay, that's uh, that could be good, I guess. That effect. Uh, you What's kinda... the rest of the card do? Oh, uh... What's that? Look up the two cards, top of the deck. Uh, oh, okay. Put them on top of your deck in any order. And when a climax is placed on your climax area, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card. Choose one card in your hand and put it in your waiting room. Uh, that's a lot of effect. I like the I like the scry two effect on the card. Yeah, scry two is good. Uh this card isn't a runner though. It's interesting that it gets villain. I know that's like a flavor thing, I guess. Um is it Paul? Is this like a flavor? yeah. Run down the lore on this, Paul. Yeah. Well, you know, Catwoman's always kind of like not actually a good guy. Always doing some villainous stuff. She's still a thief, so she kind of flip flops. So okay, I guess that's that's flavorful. Remarkable. And yeah. I'm sure there's something in the in the film. Since I haven't watched it in a little bit, I'm sure she steals something that makes Batman angry. <laughs> Probably that thingy in her hand. Yeah, she says that yeah. she, he wants. This. I would assume so. Something like that. Um, I don't. Th I think this card's pretty solid, actually. I, I like the scry two effect, and I, you know, it, it's notable that this climax is all right. It's notable that this card, like, not it does. I guess returning to your hand pluses you, so you can play it. If you're going to play a Climax, you play this down, look at the top two cards, set your triggers, or confirm if you want to brainstorm or not, and then you're going to pop it to hand. But it can't be in your back row when you do that. like, Or it can't be in your front row because you can't attack with it. So you'll lose an attack if it's in the front row. But, like, I don't know. I think it's fine. It's like a decent enough tech card. You, it, it depends how much you value looking at the top two cards of your deck. Batman doesn't value it as much as other lists do, but... I think it's still decent. 
it filters you, draws a card, filters you. Yet another card that just straight draws cards and then filters you, which makes like an uh, you know events better if you can't like bond to them in some way. I think this could be a really interesting piece though if you're trying to make a combination of weapon and villain. Mm-hmm. You're trying to run the Harley finisher. Yeah, because it gets villain when it's like, on the board. The fact that you have weapon and villain on the same card, this could bridge the gap for those decks. It's notable that if it's for a climax combo, though, and you want to do the effect, it doesn't count if like a villain card needs a certain number of villains on stage, so it'll pop to hand. But, like, well, that's know. only if you do the effect. You don't have if to pop you do it, it to hand. Yeah. You can leave it on field and swing with it. It's loopable, though. I like that you can just do it every turn. If you're playing Climaxes, you just do it every turn. Which is cool. You can, like, play it down in the back row. If you're, like, gonna go oversize, you get value out of it, you leave it on the board, you pop it to hand. Play it again. Filters you out. It's it's neat. It's unique. Um, I'm gonna give this card a B, because I think it has some hidden potential. I'm going to give it a C plus. I think it has hidden potential, but it's still niche. I think you only really put it in these decks if you're trying to do villain and weapon somehow. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's okay. That's just how I feel about it. <laughs> it's just okay. Uh, I, I might, I might the card is a card. card. Is a card. Yeah. It is. It is it's definitely a... a card. I give it. I would just. Uh... I'd probably give it a C plus, but I like the the lore behind making it a villain, so that's my B. Very good. All right, next. Uh, All right, let's... we got Batman Information Extraction. He is if uh, if your stock has two or less cards in it, he is four thousand power on a level zero. Uh, Eric Oversize. Yep. And the usable blue oversize. It's worth noting that the demo deck version, I think, is a 2 2 AK 2 soul. Um, and I think this is the final card of the Sunder combo. So, like, I don't know, you could do some cheese where you, you have a 2 soul at the end instead of this card. The demo deck stays legal. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's part of Sunder. It's a usable oversize. Goes right in the weapon deck. Give it a, give it a B, B minus. Or just a straight B. Just straight B. Oversizes like this are good. I have to just like resign myself to that fact that there are sets that don't have Chisato slash Futaba and that these cards are great in them. That's it. Boring card. It's good. Play four of it. Next. Alright. How do you say this, Paul? Ian... Ian? I don't remember. Alright, this is Ian. Uh, Ian? Ian, the Bat Clan leader. Uh, he's a Shimakai. When this card attacks, choose one of your other weapon characters. Gets 2,000 at max. Uh, Shimakais are useful. It's a 5k, which as we've discussed before is like basically the lowest threshold for like buffabil relevant buffability at one. So, this uh, is bas basically the Red Hood from the Trial Deck. The Red Hood buffs itself, though. Red Hood buffs anything, right? Does it? I don't think so. No, he so. buffs himself. Buffs himself, uh, yeah. Carmen, you were talking about that demo deck card. The one mm -hmm. we just did. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's only a one soul. Oh, it's a one soul, okay. A one soul. Yeah. So for Sunder, it's, it's equivalent. Okay. Good correction. Thank you. Keep me honest. But yeah, I don't know. These like Shimakais are like decent when you need them. So if you think your deck needs one, it, it, good synergy with the uh, good fill for your combos that need to reverse. Whether you're sh running Shimakaze or the Trial Deck one, it's not a Batman, so this one will be left out. But you can't bounce it with the Bat Clan, even though it's the Bat Clan leader, uh, which is funny. But you know. I love the his like jaw thing, his like half mask thing going on. Gives him the bat jaw. Yeah, that's his Batman cosplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go lets his big anime hair come over it. That's pretty metal, dude. That's metal as fuck. Yeah, I I think this is relevant since all your all your combos need reverse. Um, but like 
I don't know, can test for a lot of other slots. It's good fill. Like, if you need fill cards, you throw two of this in. I think you feel fine about it to get your reverses. So, like, yeah, C+. Plus. Any other thoughts? No, uh, just the same about uh, needing reverses. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about right. it. Next one, you, Paul. Level two, cost one, backup card. Put two cards from your hand into your waiting room. When you use this card's backup, you may pay that cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's characters with a level higher than your opponent's level. Put it into their waiting room. And then it's a 2,500 backup. Anti-change. Um, so what's this going up against for anti-change? The, uh... There's a poison ivy that apparently is pretty good. It's like a, I think that's a 1-1. One, one. That's a green card. It's a 1-1 one, one where you have to pay 2, and I think you sack. So you, you're... Um, let me check. I think it's a sack counter, I want to say. The Poison Ivy, pay 2, put a card from your hand to waiting room. Okay, so it's not sack, it's pitch. So level 1, 1500 backup. So level... The, the power is irrelevant for an anti-change, really, these days. You don't really play anti-changes for the power. However... This card is grabbable off cards that grab weapon. Um, so it's like, I guess it depends on your meta call, what you're afraid of. If you're afraid of things when you're at one, you play the Poison Ivy if you think that matters more. Otherwise, you play this. Because this is just a... Uh, Two cards from hand to waiting room. How, how well does this deck plus cards to hand? I guess a lot of stuff pops back to hand. Yeah, a lot of stuff does pop back that you can ditch. I think hand. I think the hand cost in Batman so far, uh, from what I've seen, is quote unquote cheaper than the three stock. But then again, if you're playing the Grod engine, you're you're plussing a lot of free stock at zero. I guess theoretically, if you're not popping it, you're just like doing the side mini game where you both side well, each a other. A lot of a lot of the hero cards, you pay stock to pop back to hand. Mm-hmm. This synergizes so, better with those, yeah. Better with the hero deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Anti-change is good. You need to run anti-change to be a relevant deck in this era. So, uh... The hey, worst case scenario, it's a 2,500 backup. That's not too bad either. Yeah, I think this is, this is a straight B. Anti-change, very important. Uh, you have options for anti-change, which any good set needs. So, that they have one, that's good. It's all just your choice, but you need to run one of them. Yeah, and the Sengoku area is very, very important to run your anti-change card. Yeah, yeah, very important in the Sengoku era. I guess if you're playing Batman into Batman, and the demo deck's legal, the Boys and Ivy is better. Next card. Who is this? Me, Paul. No, it's not. I went, uh... Oh, uh, no, or is it me? Already. No, I think you just We're went. flying through these cards. I think you just went. I think this is Andy. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah, um, okay, Batman, blast from the past. I did read the last card. Whenever this card is placed on... He's a 2-1. Whenever you play him from your stage to hand, if you do not have a monkey horde in your waiting room, you rest him. Hacks, if Bat Swarm is in your climax area and you have two or more other weapon characters, all of your characters get plus 500 power and plus one soul for the turn. Core for weapon character. Hmm, so the. But it's costless on this. Yeah. You your whole field of soul and 500 power for free. So it, it changes from a red card, a 1 0 giant monkey. Um, let me scroll to that right now, just so that I can read it, so we can... I have read at the bottom here. I gotta find this it. This has to have another... This seems to me like a yeah. like a, a second part to a two-part combo. Here's the giant monkey. When this card is played on the stage from hand, if you don't have a monkey horde in the waiting room, rest this card, so same thing. Uh, climax combo, when Bat Swarm is played, which is this 1k1 gate, uh, you pay the cost, which is put the giant monkey into the waiting room from your stage, if you do, you choose a Batman Blast from the Past in your hand and put it on the stage position that this is on, and it's a 106k. Um, 
So this card is a straight minus on Climax Combo, um, which is, like, not great. Uh, and all you get out of it is soul. I guess if you're trying to be really aggressive, maybe in that two-soul gate deck, can you play this card? Where all you do is push more soul? And you're already running the Monkey Horde army cards anyway? Which are uh, z zero bombs? That's really interesting. I mean, like we said about the last card, you are hand with this deck, probably. It does have Encore 2 a weapon character from your hand, which is, you know, if you're playing in that deck. So you're playing two soul gate. You're slamming army cards every turn. It changes and then has encore. So it changes into an encore target. So it, well, I think another important thing, what, what is the monkey horde? I, the generic I, monkey horde? Uh, it's a zero bomb. It's a zero bomb army card. You can run as many of it as you want. Red. So it, it built in red fix. For this and it's worth noting that it is a gate so like you're playing i guess if you're playing this with two soul you get pluses off triggering climaxes which is fine and this card negs you because it is a straight minus and it has to change from your hand it's a lot to ask when you don't have a plus in combo yep i'm gonna be honest i absolutely hate it yeah i'm not a fan i think it only has a place in these like unbelievably aggressive meme decks where, like, you just puke out monkeys and slam slam climaxes. They normally Are there normally cards where the climax is a different color than... Not, not typically. Especially not in English. A... You gotta keep in mind this is a red combo, too. The, it combos off of the red card at level one. Yeah. yeah. The red giant monkey. Okay. okay. And you need monkey horde, so... Yeah. Yeah, I think it's bad. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of climax combos that don't play. Are the you. are the monkeys even weapon trait? Can you even search them? <laughs> um, do you need to search them if you're running eight of them? Well, can, can you? Well, what about the giant monkey? The actual combo piece. He has a weapon trait. Yeah, he has go a weapon. figure. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, this card just feels oh, bad. Feels bad. Bad card. Any any arguments against that, Paul? It is a 2185. No, I don't like it, really. 2185 Encore. The Encore is the only interesting part. If you are running that really aggressive strategy, I guess the Encore kind of plays into it, but then you're already not plussing. And you have to change it from hand. And the card goes to waiting room. The giant monkey goes to waiting room instead of popping to hand. Which is bad. That's what we call Garbo. Yeah, real bad. I don't bad. really care to run a... Uh... A level two climax combo, in yeah, in general. But I mean, it is a, technically a level one. It does change, but yeah, it's interesting but bad. Very bad. Next. Uh, okay, Catwoman, unimpressed. You have four or more weapon characters. The cards get minus one level one in your hand, so it's an early play. If all your characters are weapon. This card gets a thousand power, and it heals you on play. Uh, this is Saya, but blue. Um, Splash Bowl early play. It heals, and it's a 10k, which is, like, the normal stat line. This is, like, fine. This is, like, fine in all caps. You know, like, this card is just okay. But it will early see play. Early play healer. It will see play. It it heals you. It's It's a card you can play, I guess. You put two of this in. The yeah, B, I mean, what else would B you... B minus. Uh, what other level 2 would you play over there? Well, if you're, you put in I, your I don't deck, know. I mean, the you, you have probably the best early play condition, right? Yeah. Like, it's it's free. essentially a free early play condition. Mm -hmm. Free early play condition, and it heals you. Which is why people run Saya. It's just free. But And Batman seems to be a deck that pukes stuff out you want the back clans on the board and stuff you can't pop this card to like loop heals but that would be three stock if you could pop it to just play another three two healer again a two i mean that's that's fine though i mean this is just better than 
this is just a better version of that Batman from the demo deck, isn't it? Because it early plays, yeah. Same thing. It's a three T ten K that early plays. Yeah, but that that's, the 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 theory is that the demo deck one comes into play for free. Um, yeah, you can't you can't cheat with this card, but yeah, it's still I like I said I think it's definitely not great, but I think you can run it with the same thought process as people run Christmas Saya, which is that you're gonna be putting a lot of stuff down anyway, so the condition's even more free and it heals you and it's a big body that your opponent has to answer because it swings for two. So, yeah, you you put two of it in your deck and you say go. That's it if you're playing weapon. I don't think they have another early play. Oh my god. <laughs> I know who the who dude who did that. The asset. That was Paul. Who could it be? He's, <laughs> he's got him. Wibe on, Schwartz. He's be? got him on standby. Alright. Next. You Paul. Oh, uh, this is me. So this is Batman Batmobile. Level three. Cost three. When it's placed on the stage from your hand, choose up the four cards in your waiting room. Put them face up underneath this card in any way. And then the climax combo, when you have that gadgetry over there, the pants, you, uh, full thing. You get the following ability, Sunder, Batman. Pay two, put four cards from your hand into your waiting room. At the end of this card's attack, you may pay the cost. Position, put this card and all the markers underneath. So do you need specific cards for the Sunder? Yeah, you do. Well, you, you can marker any four, but you have to have specific cards in a sequence, in a specific order, to Sunder. Have you ever played against that Gurren Logan deck that attacks five times with the big robot? Yeah, I played against Zack playing Sunder, but I didn't really understand why he had which cards where. This is, this is basically the same thing, but blue. Yeah. Um. Again, it's worth noting that the Sunder targets are unbelievably worse uh, than the other ones, so... You have to have a clear field to do the Sunder with this? Yeah, but they have support for that, though. Just like Gurren Lagann. It's not as good, but they do have if you it. Do, if you do not have another character. Yeah, so you need to have a clear field for this. Yeah. It's a way to sack off its whole field. Yeah, they do. Does the this deck have the same thing? Yep. It sacks three and grabs the climax for the combo. Just like I think. Lagann. I think the fact that you have a way to sack your whole field and grab the climax on this significantly worse than having the red gate on yeah. Logan version, yeah, because you're getting the course. you're getting it into your hand for free. You don't need the blue gate it into your hand. Mm -hmm. And like, but I had... mean, I guess it, I guess it helps set up your level one combo. They had the opportunity to print these in red too, uh, just because there are red weapon cards. But they printed it on, they printed it in blue because the Batmobile is blue. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's really expensive. The sack support isn't as good as the two one from Grand Logan. Um but they do have it. So like it is playable. The sack support makes it playable. Because even if you just don't grab the climax at all, you uh can clear your your field to grab it. So Yeah. What uh, do we what do we the other the other Batman finisher too? I think this is straight worse than the Batman finisher. It takes up like how many slots in your deck? Three of this, like three of this, like uh, two of the sack support, I guess, because you hold it. Then the the third card is like a anti early play bomb with like no other real effect. Uh, and then there's some other shitter card and then the zero the oversized batman the oversized batman is the only card you don't feel bad about putting your in your deck so you're committing like 12 to 14 slots to run this finisher when there are so many uh, like just straight up better cards like the card yeah I, I think the thunder combo works a lot better in gurren logan just because it's probably the strongest finisher in that set 
Because all they do is marker. They just marker. And, and then marker, all the, you marker. have all the marker compression that works with it. Yeah. Just Gate. bad. I don't think the Sunder combo is bad in Batman, but it's just doesn't seem as impressive to the me as the Garn Logan itself. one. The finisher itself is fine. The cards that go with it make it bad. I guess. It kind of feels like they shoehorn this mechanic into the set. Too. Yeah, it does. Sunder was like a really unique Gorn Logan thing. Paul, in the lore, do things pop out of the Batmobile to like get smaller ones? Like is that the is that the, the, the lore I mean, here? I think they're just trying to do like a uh... The Batman has a ton of weapon. And the Batmobile has a ton of weapons. Just has a lot of, you know, like what's it? Was it the gadgetry on the climax thing? It just has, and I guess that's what they're trying to show. That it just it has a ton of weapons, and there's a lot of it. It's resourceful, I guess. Yeah. Well, I know, I know. In one of my favorite movies of all time, Batman: The Dark Knight, the Christopher Nolan film, like the Batmobile, he cycle that comes out of it right yeah 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 that's what i was saying yeah that's what i meant like and then he can like jump off the motorcycle and attack i guess i don't know but what are the other like two pieces of the combo then it's like the motorbike the bat wing the motorbike there's one other thing it might be a glider or something and then uh this and then the the actual batman inside of it just the the oversize so like I don't know, it is silly. It's it's funny and silly, but like again, the fact that you are running bad cards other than the oversized to play this. Cause the sack support just isn't as good as the Gurn Logan one, which is like giving a character a soul that has markers or something like that, which plays right into your giant ten K where it's only drawback is it doesn't have a two soul. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna give this like this is definitely me a meme card. This is a big big meme card, but meme cards are niche. Give this a, a meme C. I think this Thunder combo is alright. You're saying the the support cards are all underwhelming. Yeah. A deck spaces for this. But it still is a five attack finisher, so I guess that makes it it's definitely explosive. Sunder can close gaps. And it doesn't have the restander problem because it changes the card. I, I definitely think it's a B minus because it is. You're, you are just maiming on people if you play this. Yeah. You're like choosing to not run the good cards that Batman has to run bad cards to say, oh my god, it's the Batmobile. Look how he pops out of the Batmobile. It's Whoa! So, it's so funny and kooky. It's so fun. Whoa. It's funny and kooky and crazy. Um, and it's it's worth noting that the other Sunder cards don't even have big power, like the Gurren Lagan ones do. So like, the Gurren Lagan one changes into from the big Gurren Lagan, the eleven five to an eleven k to a ten k to a seven five to a four to a four k. Like, indestructible 4k and in yeah in unreversible 4k that swings for two because it's the only card on the field like a really good level zero yeah so yeah e everything about that it's big big memes all right next card but it's cool it is cool it's not as cool as this next card though paul why don't you tell us all right i'll tell you Batman, the ancient grappling hook passed down from generations from Batman to Batman. <laughs> Auto, pay two. When this card's placed on the stage from your hand, you may pay the cost if you do. Choose one of your opponent's characters and move it to an open position on your opponent's stage. And when you use the act ability, choose one character on your opponent's center stage and give it Minus a thousand. Ooh, that's really interesting. Usually, these type of cards will have tap this card, give a thousand power to one of your characters. Yeah, it's interesting that it's like both a shooter and a drag. Like you can it, like pull, you could pull their brainstorm forward is, and shoot it. This is fucking. Not, 
<laughs> this is like fucking Force. This is Force from Star Wars. This is like a Force card. Pay two drag. Pay two drag and then shoot it. Or, sh or shoot something else and drag another thing for one of your things to kill. Uh, has synergy with all your reverse level 1 combos. It, it's expensive, but uh, powerful. H how much power does Batclan have? Let me scroll down here. Is it 2k. 2k? Okay. So it doesn't kill Batclan. It doesn't remove Batclan from the field, but it pulls the Batclan forward and lets you kill it. Uh, which doesn't stop them from paying one and sacking it. But still, I mean, like, that's Batman into Batman. I still think this card is, uh, this effect is strong and, like, not seen with these costs, which are fairly low commit costs. You uh, see, I, I think two is a lot for a cost like that. Well, I just think that, like, think about I think it like a hard cards... effect to, I think I'm sorry. I think it's a hard effect to balance. Because I think at one, being able to drag a character would be way too powerful. But at two, it almost seems like a big investment. I'm thinking about it in comparison to cards that have to coin flip to attack the back row. The fact that this card drags the back row. But the space has to be open so your component can play around it by just having a full field. Which they want to do anyway, in most cases. Um, like, this doesn't punish AOT or cards that leave open back row spaces. It punishes people that crash. So that does make it worse. Because, like, generally you don't crash unless you're behind. Like, it punishes your opponent when they've already been put in a bad situation, so it's win more, I guess. It depends. At zero, but at zero you're paying two stock. So Yeah, I, I think two stock's a lot to pay for an effect like that. D, I think. Yeah, I guess at the time when it's most relevant, it's way too expensive. But it does shoot, but that's not the act. Like, oh, if these were swapped, if the act was pay two, and the auto was uh, a shot for one, Maybe. It would be better. Oh, yeah, like if the card was tap, switch one of their characters. Oh, I just really meant... Solid. I just meant the, uh... Like, maybe if it was on play, rest other, and then the act was pay to rest this card to do it, because then it could sit on the field and threaten. It would warp your opponent's line of play. I'm, I'm going to give it a C-. minus. I think the effect is unique and strong, but, yeah, overcosted. Or not overcosted. I think it's correctly costed. But um, too expensive when it's most relevant, which is at zero. Maybe you can pull it off because Grodd does give you free stock plus, I guess, if you're playing that line. You're like doing this siding back and forth mini game where you're both plusing for free and dirtling. Um, so like this card helps you win the dirtle by removing your opponent's card advantage, I guess. Um, but yeah. Weird, cool, not great. Okay, uh, I think this is you, Andy. Hey. Oh, this is kind of like the antithesis to that last card mm -hmm. we just read. Money. You can rest this card to choose one of your characters and give it a thousand power. You can pay two. It's your deck for a weapon character. I like this card a lot more. Yeah, this is like the... A lot um, easier to just sit this in the back row and have a passive power pump every turn, and then... Isn't this exactly the Shift Girl card that goes in the Prince build? I'm pretty sure this is the same card. Uh, it's pay two on level up search, and then... Or it might be pay one. That card's No, really it's pay two. Pay two. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just played the deck. I should know. Uh, and then, yeah, it acts... You don't have the act support, but I mean, still pay two, level up, just grab your combos. Good. Decent, decent back row support. Spot buff for a thousand feels a lot better than it reads when you use it. Uh, yeah, I, I probably uh, would have liked it less, but comparing it to the last card, there's no reason that you, I don't, I don't think there's a reason you'd want to put the last card in over this. It's like I agree with that. You're paying the same amount, 
you're getting better benefits. Its card is always useful. Yeah. And I'm where where it's more useful. It's just more impactful. Situations than the very situational drag effect of. Yeah. Yeah, I um I like it. It's still niche, but better than average. Niche plus. I mean, I can, I can get on board with that. All right, next card. Okay, Gorilla Grodd, assembling the pieces. It's time to get down to business. Uh, zero zero two k. If this card is on your stage, it gets villain. Uh, pay one, ditch two. Uh, when you play it from hand, uh, search your deck for two characters with castle. And it's card name. Reveal them to your opponent. Put them in your hand. Shuffle your deck. So it's another ditch two, search two, but it's restricted. It does get villain trait on board. Um, uh, isn't isn't the castle finisher? Isn't that the Joker one? Yeah, it's the so hot air balloon. You play this in the Exodia deck because it gets villain on stage. It's a zero, so you don't care about the color, and it searches your castle pieces. I think that's good enough. That's like totally. I think, the, I good think you run it in that deck. Yeah, in that deck only you run this card, and that's the only place you run it. It grabs your castles for cards that aren't castles because you need them. And it you you don't care about just throwing it down at zero and like using it like a shitter because it gets villain on board, so it doesn't make your other stuff worse. So yeah, in that deck only, like straight C, usable in only that deck. Yep. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Uh, so what's the noise on Gorilla Grodd? Nothing else is... So he brought them all to the time? Yeah, so Gorilla Grodd is, uh, you know, a very smart gorilla. <laughs> he can use psychic Winston. abilities, actually. He can, like, read minds and all that. And he was just doing some type of time thing. And they all got swept into it. Oh no, I didn't expect this to happen. We're all getting sucked into time. And this is literally Overwatch. <laughs> it's Winston. Watch. Winston. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Gosh. He's also in the <laughs> Flash CW TV show. Very important in that. <laughs> on the CW. Alright, this ain't a Supernatural podcast. Let's move on. Oh, here we go. All you, Andy. Oh, Bat Clan of Hita. V card. Number of this card in your deck. And you, he has an auto ability. You can pay one and put him into your waiting room. The Batman characters is frontal attack. You can return that card to your hand. Reverse it's denial is super strong. Insane in the membrane. Yeah, this card is awesome. Then this is the reason why you play Batman Ninja. And it's an army card. It's an army card. You can run six of it. You know, I, th I think we. I think we should go into why this effect is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in, it. Especially in today's metagame. So basically, um, when you're playing well, this against card, this card's an S tier. I yeah, think we can agree yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. I think this this is sure. an S tier uh, card. Yeah, yeah. S it. Double S. <laughs> The um so basically in today's metagame, on reverse combos are really important and very strong. Uh notably AOT, Konosuba, um what else? Uh I guess the new Kalruko. And anything with a sh anything with a Shimikaze. I'd say a lot of the tier two decks. Yeah, that, that rely on like most all of the tier two decks are gonna rely on a Shimikaze type combo. So yeah, so basically at one, you put this in the back row and you deny your opponent. You're already running a Batman level one, probably. You're probably running the trial deck one. Or you have Batmans that are level ones. And you get to just pop them to hand, deny your opponent. So you get to play out your combo against their level zeros. Attack in all three lanes. Then pop them all back and do it again. So you have like an infinite advantage engine in your deck. It does minus, like it puts the card in the waiting room, but then like it, it goes the even. Other card it's even. Into your hand. Yeah, so it's even. So, it's, it's even. So with your level one combo, you're, you're playing the Batman combo. One of the Batman combos that pluses you at one. Your opponent swings back to try to kill it. You pop it back to your hand and can combo with it next turn. God forbid there. Reason 
Fate yeah. to Bear Aaron's a good card, right? Mm -hmm. So this is Fate to Bear Aaron, but across two cards. But it can be any Batman, so it doesn't need to be your combo card. So you can run that 1065, or God, like you wouldn't want to pop the 3 2 demo deck errata, but still. Like, say you have that 1-0 out, you don't have to feel bad about it. It's a 6-5. It probably cleared a lane. It was probably your third lane on the combo. And, like, if that's the lane they decide to attack, then you just pop it anyway. It doesn't matter. Like, this card in the back row is just a constant threat that you are not going to be able to reverse the one lane that you want. If you only have one combo card in your hand, you shut it any off. Any reverse finisher. Yeah. I'm sorry I cut you off there, but this is, like crazy it's yeah, like it's, yeah, think, think of something like dang dream yeah it's so good sh it's not an event and it's not a counter so yeah. things like bride for a day it dodges or anything it. that says your opponent can't play backups or can't play events this dodges it there is no way for something like bang dream to get a reverse on you well it's worth noting that uh you would have to play out the only way for you to dodge all three lanes is for you to play Two of this to the back row and one Gorilla Grodd in front. That's the only. Yeah, but way. You, you don't you don't need to dodge all three rows. That's saying you force a Bang Dream player to have to have triple Yukina. They have to have three Yukinas. They don't though. You you leave an open lane. You put two Batmans in your center row, right? You just you crash a lane and you have two of these in the back. Well, if you don't have a, I guess I guess if you crash a lane and you only have two characters out they can't reverse yeah so there it's still the batman player still has all the advantage i think you like can still against get one any reverse. against any reverse finisher especially bang dream i think but then again uh, I think this is insane i think bang dream has the best tools to deal with that though like they can i think bang dream can still get one you can reverse pretty consistently because it requires them to not play anything else it requires them to put two back clan in the back and have three Batmans up front. And, uh, you know. But then again, then it's a guessing game, right? They can pop it at any time. And, and that Bang Dream combo is so stock intensive, too. So, so resource intensive. You're just asking them to have so many pieces to deal with your strategy. This yep. card is so low maintenance for you to just have at any point in the game. And they have to jump through all these hoops. Yeah, this is... Comboing you. I'm not saying that it's not as good as you're saying it is, because it is an absolutely amazing. Um, I think you can deal with it, but like this is still an incredible card that you run more than four of in most builds. Because uh, you want to have it. I think you run at least five. Four or five. Depends on how many other things at zero you think you need. Um, I mean, just at a glance, I'd say... <sighs> I don't know, maybe five would be a good number to settle on. I mean, you don't want too many of this, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely diminishing returns on these type of cards. It does cloud your back row, but I think the times when you field it in the back row are... Because uh... when you play it in the front row, if people are teching sync, sync being... When, when we say sync, we mean uh, like the Abyssal Fleet, remove, removal of zero cards, whether it's from the center stage or otherwise. Most sets do have access to center stage zero removal. So it does cloud your back row that have to throw this in there, which is like <laughs> a cost. But like, again, it, what if it just, it, it can just win you the game. Like, the, the, I think those cards are generally low power, though. I think zero, like, six yeah, for sure. Cards at zero. Your opponents now have to run zero game worse to deal with the threat of Batman Ninja. Yeah. Like, and will they actually do that? Who knows? Yeah, there's there's no way to know how great... Because, like, again, for this to be... And it, the other thing is you don't even lose... It's not like you opened a direct lane unless you put this in the center stage, in which case you this card clears itself off as well, which is also notable. It can clear itself off, too, so Oki can open up two lanes. Um... But then you're gambling on your compression. How well does Batman Ninja compress uh, versus other decks? I think it's just kind of average. So if you're gambling on your compression in one lane, or you have it in the back row, and then what does your field look like at endgame? Is it all Batmans? 
Do you set it up to be all Batman? I, th- I think you build your deck to be majority yeah. Batman. At least anything you're sticking in the front row, I think the majority of stuff is going to have to be a Batman character. And I think, as it turns out, a lot of the be running are Batmans. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this card's just, like, amazing. Like, reverse denial that's not, an, that's not a backup. It's not a backup. It's not an event. It's a card on the field with an effect that you can't stop, and that's what makes it so powerful. And it's an army card. That's just ridiculous. It's an army card. You can run as ever many of you as you want. If all your if your entire scene is nothing but AOT and Konosuba, you run eight of this card. <laughs> like, just throw it in there. Who cares? No, notably, this doesn't stop Megamine, though. No, it doesn't stop Megamine. Because Megamine doesn't attack. She just rests herself and sends you to Claw. But it does stop them from building stock with Union. And Union only sits at six, and they don't run a meaningful backup. So Union is farmable by you if you're running the trial of that combo. Nobody can stop Megumin. I, th- and... I think against, against decks that go all in on one lane, too. So things like Persona 5 that have the double effect off. Or Card Captor if they're running the... Uh... Yeah. What's the cat the frog, called? The frog suit, or the caro? What's the caro, yeah. They're running, like, the double caro combo, the change to the 2-1. Mm-hmm. Persona 5 has a similar thing with the one... The, the show's it's, it's over. A... Yeah. Yeah, the 2-1 that... And draws a card. Yeah. It's worth noting that that deck runs win, though, so it can trigger this. I think that... the That is true. It's... This card does get they, countered by wind, but... No, it does. Well, you can... This auto effect triggers before their climax trigger. Yeah, because it, it, it declares on... It, it goes on declaration, so yeah, you're right. Because it's the second you declare and before you trigger. So there isn't... The wind doesn't work against it. God, this card gets better and better. Like... Everything about this card. S S plus. Jesus. Like just everything about it. Unconditional reverse denial. So fucking good. I don't know what else to say about it. Like we can go through all of these. We could, we, could, we could sit here and go through every deck in the format, but ba- the TLDR of it is basically if you're running any sort of on reverse strategy, this card Throws a massive wrench in your strategy. You need to be aware of it. You need to have a way to play around it. Um, it's just so good. Everything about it, so good. And it's automatic. You don't have to think about it. It's like, oh, are you going to reverse me? It, it's, it's the same sort of like... I hate to call it brain dead. Where it's like, you look up, you're playing AOT, and you look up and you say, oh... Do you get something when you reverse me? Okay, gear. And you run away. It's the same thing. But it's a character, and they can't turn it off in any way. At all. And it's an army card. You can put even more of it. You can only run four gear. You can run as many of this card as you want. It's just gear on a body. It does have a cost, so you're, pe- you're bleeding stock to play this. But your hand doesn't n- neg at all. Because it replaces itself with the card that you already played. So I guess, I don't know, it's like half a card, I guess. Uh, pay, paying one to shut off their much stronger effect is yeah. well worth it. I agree. Just an amazing card. Army. Oh, you have anything to add? Uh, I guess the only problem is uh, you are paying one every time. And that if this is in your back row the whole time. Uh, then you can't really run a brainstormers or assist. Yeah, this, let... this would take the spot of your assist card. But again, in this situation, we're talking about of the finisher. Like, I think you can deal with this card at one. I don't think that's the problem, really. Okay. It's yeah. it's the finisher, right? Like, it shuts off Yukina. That's ridiculous. It just shuts her off. Like goodbye. It's good luck playing Musashi's. Good luck being like, contact. Like imagine, imagine how hard it's going to be for your opponent to get a reverse at level 1, though, to get their combo. Imagine this situation. Your front row that you have left over from level 0 
You have the Catwoman runner, a Batman. And th and this card. So you clear And this two. card in your back row. They have to try field you to get one reverse. Yeah. They clear one and then the 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 thing runs. Runner runs. I think when Batman becomes a well played set, and it's going to be. Like we're gonna see so much of Batman Ninja. It's gonna bring people into the game. Um like we're not the only scene that has a card shop that's also a comic book shop. This is gonna bring people into the game. And people that are playing other card games are going to see this card and instantly realize its value. And they're going to play a lot of it. Um, and it's just so strong. Warps your line of play. And it, it, again, this like forces you to tech sync into your deck, which makes your zero lineup worse. And they have another card that's just remove a lane on a stick too. So like... Uh... It's just like the reverse denial in Batman Ninja is absolutely ridiculous. That's that's all there is to say. S plus, amazing, meta defining card. Next, who this? You. All right, Catwoman. Back to the present. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, this card gets plus X power until end of turn. X is equal to the number of weapon characters you have times 500. So it hits on itself. Uh, act. Put one Climax into your hand from the waiting room, and this card gets 1,000 power and draw one on reverse. And you can uh, stack this ability. So you say if you're flooded, you get to one and you have one of this card. You're no longer flooded anymore. And you're drawing one for every one you ditch. And it hits for what? Seven? Eight? Two five? Two five on top of this? That's seven? Can't do math? Yeah, seven. That is it's, it's seven. It's notable that the during your main phase. So if you have multiple climaxes that are cluttering your hand, you can do the effect multiple times. Yeah, this card just saves Earth. you. This card saves you from dying, basically. It reveals to your opponent that you bricked. So if you have a lot left in your deck, you can't like you can't just slam this ditch a bunch and have a big deck. Because then you just signal to your opponent that you're out. And you can do all the lane clearing you want. They don't give a shit. Because they're just going to slam you for threes and fours. And they're all going to stick. However, this card is really strong. And will clear just about anything. If you ditch one, because it's going to go to eight. And if you have, if you're ditching one climax, you have another that you're probably going to play. So, you know, it's going to get to nine. Clears anything at one. This is like a super, super solid tech card. The fact that it's an act, that it's repeatable. You just do it. You just do it until you need to not do, do it. It only gets the big power. But, like, if it does stick and they don't answer it, you can just do it again and it gets to, what, 55 on the other one? Like, that's not bad. It's vanilla. You flood out the next turn. God forbid. The great tech card. A. It, it is a Catwoman, though. Yeah, it is a Catwoman. So if you... And that's why it's a tech card, right? Like, it's, it's your out to being flooded. It's like a perfect out. The Climax Flood. So I give this a B plus just because I feel like it's more just a safety card and not just a, you know, it could be taking a spot of another Batman or something like that. I, don't, I forget what other level ones there are. It's, it's uh, definitely two. a more reactive card always want, as opposed to something like like your combo or other S rank cards we've gone over. This is like only situational. But still, the situation like it, the situation it saves you from is a situation that not a lot of decks can fix from. Like I feel like only Bang Dream and Konosuba get out of that situation. Well, and even still, they have to expend multiple cards for it. Yeah, this is just free. Yeah, it has to reverse to plus off it again, but. When you're in that bad of a situation, 
you kind of just want to get them out, you know. Not that bad. Very good. Very good tech card. You probably want at least one of this. At most two. In most weapon builds. It doesn't have That's Sengoku right. trait. Only oh, in no. the present. Nothing works off Sengoku trait anyway. Yeah. Alright, next. Well, all you, Paul. Alright, I'm, uh, I'm up on this one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Level one. Cost one. Batman the final showdown. Let's end this Joker. Just you and me. <laughs> this card gets plus 500 for each of your other weapon characters. And it has, what is that, hand encore? Yeah. So what, it goes up to 75 and has hand encore. Oh, yeah. it's Celica. It's the standby target. Yeah. For no yeah, standby. Uh, I like this. I have this in my fate deck. Uh, but you're not paying for it when you play it. Yeah, that's true. Well, sometimes I do because I always have a stupid amount of stock in that deck. But in this one, I would not. Yeah. If cause... I'm running, if I'm running a lot of Bat Clan of Hita, though. Yeah, this has anti synergy with Bat Clan. The, the reason to play Batman, you can pop stuff back and replay it. Like I don't want to be paying one stock every time for this. So basically, every card with bat clan becomes a this card is equivalent to any one oh batman and bat clan of hita because you're ditching a card and paying one to play it's, it it's like i feel like you want to be popping stuff back your hand in this set like yeah it's just so disruptive with so many one, decks you'd have to pay one you'd have to pay one every time you put it back down right yeah, yeah it, this it, is a card that wants to sit on the field it's not literally equivalent to bat clan on one card. But it doesn't deny the reverse. Yeah, it doesn't deny the reverse. <sighs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's bad in this set. I think this card is bad in this set. Because of the reasons we just outlined. Like, in any other set, this would be like niche minus. Like niche. It's, it would be B in a set that had standby. Um, yeah, I also I also don't like the fact that it's five hundred for each other character as opposed to just plus fifteen hundred. If you have two or more, yeah. Like the other ones, that it means that there's going to be a lot of other times when this ends up sitting at like sixty five hundred as opposed yeah. to always being at seventy five. Yep. Especially with Bat Clan, when you're stacking two characters off your field, this drops a thousand power immediately. Yep. Just so gets I'm gonna worse say, and worse. I'm gonna say C. Like the card profile is still good. It's just G with the set as a whole. Yep. Yeah, I agree with you guys on that. Doesn't jive. Just, doesn't jive. Just, yeah, it doesn't doesn't go together with it. All right, next card. Catwoman, beguiling maiden. Damn, that's Catwoman. Yeah, she's in Jeez. disguise. Yeah, it's Catwoman. She's doing some theft or something. I don't know. She's an old Japanese Catwoman. I really right. doubt the Joker cares about history. Hey, thank you for the enlightenment, Paul. Oh, about why um, she anyway. say that? Or why she's dressed like that? <laughs> I believe she's Yeah, whatever. Like <laughs> um, Which one was? So, Batman gets there later than all the other people, I think. So all the other people are there, like two years before Bat. So they spend like two years in San Diego <laughs> here, <laughs> until Batman gets there. <laughs> Why? We thought we were stuck here forever. <laughs> Jesus, the, like the movie gets worse and worse the more I hear yeah, people no, talk about it. That's how all the villains become the feudal lords because they build up their stuff and they have you know two years to build up their armies. The Joker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just so wait, what's this card do? The, just wait till we get to the mech card. <laughs> the mechs? <laughs> oh my god, the mechs. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, this card is a 2-1. Uh, gives 2,000 power to your level 3 characters in front of it. On the field from your hand, you get to draw a card and ditch a card. This is Amelia without the tap down. Uh, brainstorm effect. Solid, but I think I'd rather just run one of the other level assists, probably. 
these cards are better when you have a lot of very impactful early plays, and this set does not have them. Also, your finisher, your primary finisher, is going to be the restander. Yeah, which gets power so, on its own. And the same with the sunder. Like, neither of those require a reverse, so... It's worth noting that the other reverse, the, the TD one, the reverse restand, is also a Batman, and is also level 3, so... But it it's like a 12k on play... I don't know. Do you need more power than that most of the time? Like, I, you could also just run a normal level assist that has a more useful second effect, I think. Yeah, I agree. And I think if, you're, bad, run, if you're running an off-climax finisher, you probably won the Red Hood, which is the on-reverse, pay two, ditch one, burn five. So, yeah, see. Not bad, but no real reason for this. Yeah, I uh I'm not feeling it. Not in this deck. All right. Essential for any Catwoman waifu deck though. Yeah. Very important for Catwoman waifu cuz you are Oh, here we go. Player. Our first thunder card is the next All one. All Catwoman waifu. All Catwoman waifu players will be ex <laughs> All right. Batman Bat Cycle 216k. It is a bottom deck uh anti-change bomb and it has thunder. Uh, Carmen, you lied to me. This is a completely playable card. It's Hard playable at one, but not three. <laughs> yeah. That that's the problem. The card is this is a great card that I would say that you would run one of. Like if you were facing a lot of early plays, I love hey, the line. You, you just don't run the early play counter. You just run three or four of this, and then you never have to deal with an early play. Yeah. So. You know, I thought that that was how that worked um, when I was playing Afterglow, and I put a four Hemery in my deck. And you know what? It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, it just doesn't work that way at all. It never does. It just clogs your deck up. So yeah, running more than one of this or two of this, I don't know. Can you get away with running two? Probably not. It's got to be in your. I, I don't room. right now. This is one of those times when you need Zach here to. Uh... Tell us. Yeah. Oh yeah, it needs to be in the waiting room, right? So you can't even hold on to it. Yeah. Or I, I, just, or I, I worse, don't know how heavily you have to commit to Sunder. Or worse, to get it, off. it needs to be on your field. And these don't live, right? Because you could sack it off with the uh, the Batwing, which is like two cards away. Because that's sack three characters, grab the the blue gate. Um. Like. I don't know. You just don't want to run more than one of this at any point. Because the second effect... Uh, unless you need to Sunder with it, in which you're just running meme cards because they're Batmobiles. You know what I'm realizing? Like, this movie, like, how does it make any sense? Everyone else is using, like... Well, weapons and shit. Like, uh, all the uh, Harley Quinns and Jokers are using, like... Oh, no, they bring the Batmobile. Makeshift bombs. Period. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah, only Batman has futuristic weapons, and everyone else is using fucking swords. No, they have the mechs, dude. Yeah, they have the mechs. Yeah. The castles. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, oh like... Oh my god. I, I think this card's... Let's just get back to the card. This card's fine. Like, it's fine... Like, again, when you're in this meta where you're dealing with a bunch of early plays all the time... Like, say that you play against nothing but Love Life Sunshine players because you live on, like, the sixth circle of hell or something, um, <laughs> and that's all you play against. Yeah, you run one anti-change counter and one anti-change bomb. I think that's all you run to deal with a heavy anti-change environment is two cards, and never more than that. Most decks are only running one answer, to whether it's a counter or a bomb. So running more of this makes your deck just worse, and you only play it when you're more in at more than one when you're memeing to play the Batmobile. So because of that, it it gets a this gets a B minus. it would get a normal B if it wasn't attached to Sunder, but it's still a fine well, you, card. You could, that, that's I don't understand how you're thinking that way. The fact that it has it is part of the combo makes it better. Oh, I guess, when, when but you're... running more of more than one of it makes it worse. You can't run one of it when you're playing Sunder, so might as well not have the second effect. But then you're right. How good I already play bottom deck or tie in Bang Dream. So yeah, so it's just a B. 
It's a playable response. That's where I stand on it, too. Well, I gave it a C plus. Well, why did you do that, Paul? Uh, because you have to run Sunder. And Sunder is... We hate Sunder. <laughs> we hate Sunder. All right. Next card. It's too confusing. <laughs> too, there's too many cards. How's anyone supposed to remember? It. I do understand it more now. And it's all right. I don't know. You have to have a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. Gorilla Grodd. It's you, Paul. Uh, Gorilla Grodd. Battle on, <laughs> battle on the big boat. What is this big boat? <laughs> they do a battle on a big boat. Is that it? And his his uh, voice line is raw. <laughs> this card gets plus fifteen hundred power for each of your other weapon characters on your backstage. Auto pay one. When this card's level two or higher, battle opponent becomes reversed. You may pay the cost if you do put the top card of your clock into your waiting room. That is uh that's interesting. I don't think I've ever. Uh, are there other cards like this? And I just haven't seen it. Very few of them. This is definitely a unique one. So it sits at 9,500. But continuously heal every turn. But it doesn't have Encore. It can heal on your opponent's turn, too. If they, uh... But it has to be a level 2 or a higher opponent. Are Which... you really hitting over a level 2 or higher with a 95? This card would be amazing if you had standby. Anything. If you had standby and had a 2k costless backup. Because you could heal off it. That'd be sick, but you don't. It's a lot to invest in a card that doesn't instantly have a effect. Yeah, um, yeah I, I don't like that it does not have Encore. There's a lot of cards in this deck that'll be pretty good with standby. D plus. Hey, maybe we'll get a standby promo card in the second demo deck that you have to go to Iceland to get, <laughs> and you can you can you can only get it when you go all the way to the North Pole, and it's like buried under like two <laughs> miles of snow, and that's the only way you can fucking get it. And then Bushiroad says, "Yeah, then you can run standby in Batman Ninja." Oh my god! <sighs> yeah, I love it every time I start a bang dream, and they're like, "Bushi." <laughs> Bushimon. All right, next. There you go. All right, Andy. you got the another sun. Is this part of the Sunder? It looks mm -hmm. like it is. Yeah, this is the Batwing. This is the the big. This is card. the second what? card. Yeah. All right, Batman Batwing, three two nine K. When this card is placed on stage from your hand, you can put the top card of your clock into your waiting room. Stage from the marker area. This gets the following ability, Sunder. Has a climax ability, put three characters from your stage into waiting room, choose an anarchologist gadgetry in your waiting room, return to your hand. Yeah, I really don't like this as much as the uh, Simone from Garn Logan. Yeah, so it has the... A lot more useful on its own. This is just a bad healer. that you, If you want to use this to get your combo back to your hand, you have to like be at level three, pay two stock for this, then dump even more resources. Yeah, it doesn't change, uh, like the ship does, which is like so. What Garn Logan has over this is they have a changer that changes into their three three, so you play it for one less stock, which also heals on play. Uh, so the heal is like equivalent. You're you're still getting the heal. However, the Simon that sacks off for the combo is not part of the sunder whereas this oh, is cool. so this is part of the sunder but that also makes it even more awkward so you have to play this down over something else and sack it and the rest then play it pay another three to pay out play out your batman so you have to this, this you have to just... have five you have to have seven stock in the same turn you have to have seven stock and four cards in hand to sunder because you have to have two. Well, you have, no, you have to have six because you get one on the attacks. So you have to have six stock to clear off your whole board and do this. So it's so much harder to set up than Gurren Lagann. I absolutely hate this. If this wasn't part of the Sonder combo, I'd give it a fucking F. Yeah, 
I think it, I think it, it is almost D minus. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah, D minus. This is super bad. And whereas the Simone is so good, it's like an assist that gives your characters with marker soul. I think it gives a soul to a character um, when you tap it. And Here, this, this just this just doesn't do anything. And you have to this play is, it. At this three. makes me sad every time I play it. That's what it does. Yeah. <laughs> All it or does is kill itself. Longer. All it does is kill itself. I'll give it a All D just because it heals. Ugh. All right. Next. Batman, sinking ship. When this card attacks, choose one of your other weapon characters. That character gets a thousand, and it bonds to the Catwoman, which is the ooh, Shimikaze. I like that. I like that it bonds to the yeah. Shimikaze. This is this is, this is cool. Um, this is like a, a lot better. This is a reason to run the Shimikaze uh, instead of the Trial Deck one, but the Trial Deck one has the Bat Clan reason to play it. So, is bonding to it better than having to draw it and being able to recur it? I think recurring it is stronger because you only need to get one to possibly threaten doing two combos. And you drew cards when you did it, so there's a high probability that you drew into another book. Uh, unlike the Shimakaze. I think that if you're playing in a meta that has a lot of reverse effects on reverse stuff and combo with the bat clan but if your meta is very light yeah effects, then this is probably just better <laughs> if, if bat clan isn't going to be good in your meta mm -hmm. if you play against nothing but like vang dream and like nana juna revue and what else is not interactive in the meta right now sal sal like standby yeah. switch sal standby switch um Sal doesn't care about reverse. Love Live level. to an extent. Yeah, Love Live Sunshine. Uh, if they play Ruby. It's only if they play Ruby. Even, even if they're playing Chica, it's not like... Mm, they need to plus. It's a reverse combo, but it's like... It's not like a damning level 1 combo. It's not something like... Aaron or yeah, Union here or anything. Your finisher it's doesn't just care about reverse, yeah. So... Hmm... It definitely makes the Shimakaze better. Uh, very interesting. I think you run it at two. Uh, and it gives your Shimakaze more power, too. So, if you... Yeah, this is great. I, I, definitely a meta call. Yeah, meta call B. Very interesting. Next card. Right, next card. You, Paul. Oh, I messed up the Climax again. Wow. You know Ever what? Ever heard of a decoy? I'm just going to When this card go. is placed on the stage from your hand, look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top or bottom. I'm just going to go and grab it. And then when you have Elusive Kitty on the Climax area. There it is. You have another weapon character. Look at the top card of your deck and put it on... Yeah, look at the top card of your deck. Put it on the top of your deck or your waiting room. And this card gets the following ability. Auto. When this card is frontal attack, return it to your hand. More fucking bounce. Oh, jeez. You give the Aaron Pop back effect. Yeah. Oh, but you're giving it to a level zero. That's kind of... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't like this a level awkward. zero. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's a zero combo to target something else... Uh, it's Grise. It's like a budget combo, but why would it be? It's an alternative that you have no reason to play because the better combo, quote unquote, is an uncommon and a card from a trial deck. <laughs> like, I just don't see a reason to play it. You could play this entire combo, or you could just play as many bat clans as you want. Yeah. In a vacuum, gonna... this is fine, I think, as a level zero combo. It doesn't... It, like, pseudo-pluses you. Or it, eat, it makes your characters go even. But it's a, And it's a stock soul. If for some reason you want to run stock soul, it's fine. But yeah, it's just... It's not good. D. Bad. Man, I want to know what this big boat is, though. Yeah. D, uh, lots D of boats. It's hard. Yeah. 
All right. Next. I would have been a much better Sunder. Screw the Batmobile. Give me big boat, Sunder. All right. So who is this? Is this me? Yeah. You, okay. You out, Gorilla Grodd decoy. Uh, when this card is frontal attacked, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one Batman infiltration in your hand. Put it on the stage position that this card was on as the defending character. The Batman infiltration is either a 1065 that cannot attack unless you have two or uh, if there if you don't have two characters on your backstage. Um, and all of your characters get that they can't side attack. Uh, or a three two healer. So yeah, this is the card that everyone's freaking out about. Um, it denies uh, reverse by itself, by pay one pops to hand. Uh, worth noting, like we said in the trial deck video, um, to love Rue runs this card at four without a change target, just because it denies reverse and goes even. Um... So, I don't know. Like, the card in a vacuum by itself, even not even thinking about the change targets are, is good. And both the change targets are also good. Like, the one I would I would not say that. I think the change targets are actually bad cards. And they're only good if you change into them. Well, yeah, they're good when you change into them. I think the 6-5 is fine. I think a 1 zero, six, five that can't attack unless you commit a lot of cards to your back row, I'm not thrilled with that. But when you change into it, it clears this lane at zero, is the thing. Nothing can get 6-5 at zero without you knowing about it, right? Like, you have to know about it and answer it. I mean, fair, but it's, it doesn't even have a combo. Vanilla 6-5. Yeah, it, but it's also, all the time. it's also and, and then the 3-2 uh, towards it, but I still don't think it's a great card. It's a Batman, and though. You can bounce it with Bat-Clan, too. Infil the Infiltration Batman, the level 3 version, even assuming it doesn't get a rotted, somehow not being legal, right? Assuming yeah. it doesn't get... Banned, yeah. It's just a, it's a worse version of your early play that heals. It's just a vanilla 3 to 10 k healer, which... It is putting eight cards in your deck. But you're, then you're putting, again... You're putting, you're putting... At least the Gorilla Grodd, you make a good point. They're at least somewhat useful on their own. But somewhat. then you're just... I think they're so useful on their own. Because what, what does this card read? This card is a runner that you try field with. Like, this card is a runner that reads, your opponent cannot front attack this at zero. That's what this reads. God forbid there's a three to you can't front attack it until level two. Like... It gives your it gives your opponent it gives you just nothing but free pluses. It gives you a plus every turn because your opponent has to side it. However, the counterplay is siding it, where you play like I said this stupid side mini game, where your the Batman player is hedging their bets that their pluses are better than yours. And I don't think that's true for any deck in the meta right now. I think that if you let like AOT Sunshine, God forbid you let Sunshine just plus at zero. Like, Jesus Christ. All you can do <laughs> against Sunshine is starve them out at zero because they can't fucking do anything but play their Mill Runner and their Yoshko if they even fucking draw them because they only run 14 or 15 zero. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, God forbid you give any of these decks. I'm not, I don't even want to talk about Bang Dream. Like, Bang Dream just doesn't give a shit about what its opponent does at any level until it gets to three. In which you lose to Backclan, but still, we're talking about levels one through two. <laughs> like, the fact that Batman doesn't have a way to really generate a ton of advantage off of plussing for free off Grodd, other than bouncing its stuff, which is very good, right? Yeah. Like, the fact that you're giving your opponent a bunch of free pluses... Just make this card good, unless it has, even if the 3 2 remains legal. However, this does let you heal for one at zero. So you're getting another turn at zero. But, like, it never happens, right? The, it never no one, happens. No one's going to play into it. Yeah, like, you have to be an idiot or ignorant. You have to be, like, 
You have to be an ignorant sweet summer child or an idiot to front this card at zero. Like, even if the 3 2 is eroded, right? So. If the 3 2 if the three two is eroded, I don't know if I'd be as scared as attacking into it. It's just a lose a lane. But then, but then that still gives initiative to the Batman player, right? Because they need I, I to reverse at one. They, they want to reverse at one. So if they bait you into clearing Gorilla Grodd, then, oh, you cleared it? All right, time to swing off your 2 5. You know? Like. Time to just kill your 2-5. Um, it's worth noting that uh, if this strategy does become popular, I think we're going to see Bang Dream and uh, P5 pop a lot alongside Batman for however long the 3-2 is legal or however long people play a bunch of this card. Do we? Do we, though? Because we, we were mentioning earlier that Bat Clan destroys bang dream and i'm not P5. even talking about that i'm talking about any deck that can play a level one three five that grod doesn't want to crash into because then you have to side a level one for nothing so you give your opponent more free turns than you will get then you lose because your opponent had two turns at zero and they were playing decks that pop off at zero namely bang dream and Persona 5. Both of them do. Like, I think that that makes those decks so much better. On top of the fact that, uh, ba well, Bang Dream especially, neither of their combos that people play at 1 care about reverse. So they just, like, they get on the advantage train where they're too compressed for you to do fucking anything to kill them. They'll kill you with vanilla swings. You can kill their Musashi and they'll grab it and play it again. And they'll do that as many times as they need to to kill you. And they don't care about playing Yukina because they got two free turns. Two free turns against decks that have these access to level one oversizes just destroy this card. And there are plenty Damn, of ways. This is just such a this is such a tricky card to evaluate. Yeah, it's... like the effect on a stick but... is good, right? It's just denial by itself alongside the back plan. So it's yet another card you can run that has another form of sa of like sack off denial except this one pops to your hand so it's pay one go even right you play at the field you pay one you pop it back you have it again actually then, yeah then you clock it and that's why two lovery runs it they run it without the target just to pop it back to hand deny reverse and have a card in their hand to clock it's like a pay one plus sort of to decks that like need it you know you paid one you attacked pay one go even Comes back to hand. It's Dirtle the card. This is Gorilla Grodd Dirtle Boy. He really is the decoy. All he does is nothing. Like, by himself. And again, it's worth noting that both targets are Batman. They synergize with Bat Clan. Like, oh, think of, like, ugh, so much tricky lines of play with this card. Uh, okay, I think it's an A+. Plus specifically for the reason mentioned that it can you can always pop it back to your hand regardless of whether you have the combo piece in your hand or not it can always save itself and always deny a reverse it is worth noting like you said you, if this gets eroded if the 3-2 gets eroded and you can't play it and uh, I think it's an A- minus. I think it gets worse if you lose that big threat of like you're, an you're putting, early change you're putting anywhere between two to four bad cards in your deck, this 1065, where their only real notable trait is being walls that are Batman that you can pop at one with Bat Clan, which is, like, notable, right? So they're it's, not... They're sometimes not... the threat is worse than the actual card. Yeah, this it, is, this if is your a opponent D play, chess. Th think, of, think of the gambit you, t you make. Your yeah. opponent plays around an imaginary card. Yeah to run batman infiltration and your opponent will just play around it because you have this gorilla yeah i think that's what makes it so good it's 40, people it's 40 swords, chess it's it's not magic the gathering it's not Yu-Gi-Oh. people will play whatever the fuck they want in a heart in a white schwartz deck yeah crazy ass tech cards like no, no no deck list is completely solid people will just play whatever the hell they want yeah which makes it even unpredictability scarier. makes it even scarier yeah like, this card is 4D chess on a card. Like, just the level of, like, 
fucking like equations flying across the screen memes that this card like creates by itself makes it so good i don't even want to talk about the three two like how dumb that is it's such a stupid oversight i don't even think it's broken i don't think it's broken because again like okay so in this situation where your opponent so obviously hard mulls for this combo say they are running it and the three two is legal they open Grodd and four junk cards that they don't want, and they drop four going first. I would, I would like, sit there, search out my sync tech, and sync this card. Because you know what's real? You know what sucks though? If you're running a deck with an on reverse combo, again, going back to the fact that Batman's really good against on reverse. Mm hmm. In a situation where you finally do go for your on reverse combo at one, you want to reverse this little gorilla Grood, mm -hmm. and then they change it into a 10k. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so like this. God, it, it, that, I think that makes it broken. Actually, the fact that not the fact that it, it's it's necessarily just a free pop back, but it on reverse combo. If you change in a 10k. It's just yet another card that Batman can use to deny reverses, which is, like, its entire thing right now, is denying reverses throughout the game and being, like, a huge bitch about it, and it's a massive pain in the ass to deal with. Like, ugh. Like, if the 3-2 stays legal, the threat the, of it... I, I convinced myself. If the 3-2 stays legal, I think this is an ass. The, the blowout potential is so huge, and it completely warps your opponent's line of play. You just never... I mean, I guess so, but then if you just never frontal attack this card, they never get the 3-2 out, and they just have that, like... Yeah, but then three, they plus Then they plus for two turn, two to three turns for free. Then, what, do you, what do you do? Never go off with your combo at one? If you have an on-reverse combo, what do you do? You play your backup strategy. That's all you can do. Like, all you just can... You have to play shitters against them. You have to play I mean, shitters, yeah. Like, you do the backup, and then... It, I mean, their cards are... Because their cards only good on the change, so then they just have these not as good cards that they can play to reverse. Yeah, you, and like they you. will, they will minus when they play. Uh, like uh, they don't minus for playing over. That's that's a the wrong line of play. Like, uh it's a card. The card is so good that it forces you to run tech specifically against it. Like in Weiss, there has been nothing like this where you will tech cards into your deck to counterplay around like effects that more than one set have has this is an effect that only one set has that if you are going to bcs or Springfest, you need to run tech against this to be able to deal with it you need directed hate on gorilla grod the card to deal with him it's only like coincidental that the bat clan is also a zero that like zero hate can also target like, uh, this card, this is like the most amazing card ever that loses to Wing Slayer. <laughs> the 1 0 Disgaea, 1 0 Disgaea, Negura, Foden's whole field for 3k. Big brain, Gorilla Grodd. Yeah, massive brain. This, this card gets a galactic brain out of 10 for me. I think I'm with Andy. I think it's this S, S A line. I think the plus, I've seen 2 Love Rude do this, like 2 Love Rude JP do this, and it does look like it would feel really good to do, just have return, reverse denial on a stick to play, even without the target. But like, just like the 4D chess in English, because English plays around like very specific effects that only exist in the meta, e even with the randomness. It's just like, this card is just ridiculous. Like, again, like, equation memes flying across the screen. The card. Like, the, the possible level of mind games. I think it's... And that being said, I think it's cool that this card exists. The 3-2 existing due to a distribution error is, like, ridiculous. Like, that's so stupid. Like, again, it's the stupid... Like, the, the, the joke I just made where you have to go all the way to the North Pole and dig it up and then you can play the card. Like, it, it's like that. It's so dumb. Like, that should never happen. It's like... It's like Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship promo card levels of dumb. 
where like for renting a regional you would get an overpowered card which would then be legal for the next two to three regionals ensuring your three peat because no one else has the card which then nets you a play set of the card making your deck stronger and making you more un unstoppable like it's 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 not quite that because the demo deck is more available than like a single card you get for winning but like it's similar in the level of just utter stupidity and oversight that this card has I don't know. I don't want to talk about this card anymore. Yeah, it's, you're, it's super. You're, you're really going around that wheel, my friend. You yeah, need to this is this pull you is off that wheel. Grod's going right on the wheel, like he's up there. <laughs> he's All on right. the wheel. Okay. All right. Next card, we have Eon. He's a zero zero four K. He cannot move to another position on the stage. And when you play a when your opponent plays a climax area, he goes to your waiting room. It's just more. They just it's the only thing this set does. It's just go to waiting room. They just and go deny to waiting combos. room. Oh my god. That's all it does. Is this a better oversize than the other one? Probably not, because you're paying out stock all the time. So that you're you'll always have the four K Batman and it's a Batman. But I mean this automatically just kills itself. <laughs> and it's a it's an oversize that just gets rid of itself but it can't move what a drawback uh oh oh man this this is like a really good card you you can't you <laughs> it's a can't good card you can't control yeah, field with it the fact though. that he kills himself is a good thing you can't, they got to combo you you can't feasibly control board though with zero with this because you can't move it or he does he he locks down a lane well say you have like grot out right like, if you have Grodd in this card out, you can just move your little 2k around that has to side something. So if this is your card that kills something and it can't move, I think it makes the, the Batman oversize better. Especially because you're paying one to pop stuff back to hand all the time. I think it's, like, just straight up worse than the Batman oversize. I'm not too big on this card at all. I like, like the fact that he sacks himself off. I think that's but I the guess best that there is the a lot card. of stack effects in this set. Yeah, I think it's cloud. I think this is a cloudy card, very cloud. We, we gave we gave the other oversized Batman a B. It was B's across the board. I'm gonna give this a C minus. I'm gonna give it a B also. I think it's roughly equivalent to that other Batman. Hmm. I mean, stick I Paul. If you, if you think it's a D, it's just like if you think it's that bad. Put it out there. I mean, I, I'm i almost inclined to agree with you. Like, I think the whole point of oversizes is controlling board, especially when you have this, like, omnipresent threat of Grodd. You, you want to be able to move your beater around to kill stuff, and you can't. So I, th I think the point of having oversized at level zero is to... Lock lanes. Ramp card advantage. Yeah. Make sure you survive back and get another attack. It definitely would be better if it could move, obviously, but I th I think appropriate downside for the upside you get of the the uh, sack off your opponent has a climax. Yeah, an upside. special effect sometimes. All right, next Nightwing coordinated assault. Uh, when this card becomes reverse, uh, if this card's battle opponent is cost zero or lower, you bottom deck that card. Cost bomb. Uh. I don't really like cost bombs, but they they work and they remove the card. Um, it doesn't have any um, other effect. Solid playable card. I think the other reverser is a double rare and it's villain. So yeah, I I think this has to be. This is your bomb that you play. B yeah B minus. I don't like cost bombs, but if you're playing weapon. This is your bomb. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd prefer a level one bomb, but do what you got to do. All right, to you, Paul. All right, we got another Sunder card. We got the Armored Batman. Uh, during your turn, if you have another weapon character, it gets plus three thousand, putting it to seven thousand, and then uh, Sunder. So this is the uh, second to last. Yeah, yeah, cost zero. Uh, it's a 
cost zero, seven thousand all the time, pretty much. So I guess not terrible. Only on your turn. Oh, only on your turn. Uh, I don't really. But it's it's still a one zero seven k, so it could be worse. Let's see, ne more memes, more meme cards. There are better cards to play than this. I don't think it. I still. I, it's not really a great card. You only run it if you're running the Sunder deck, of course. Yeah. It's the best Sunder card we've seen that's not the Oversize. The Oversize is the best one. It's up zero. All right, next. All right, Batman, Charitable Dealings. One zero four k All of your other weapon characters get plus 500 power. You choose one of your weapon characters and give that card 1,000 power for the turn. Isn't this just... Wasn't there another card to tap to give a... Th there was a card earlier. It was a level zero. Tap. It's the, uh, power, and it's then you the on level up. Charge. It's the on level up pay two, yeah. Yeah, I think that card's better than this. This is a level one. This is yeah. a level one. Trash. Bad. Real bad. I think that other card's Deep. better. Deep. Yeah, so the, if you notice the art, the lore behind this is that the Joker and Harley Quinn get uh, amnesia. And they go into this thing where it's like a watercolor painting scene. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> You'd have to see it. If you'll see the one card later on, there's like, there's a, there's Amnesia Harley. And it doesn't look like her. It looks like a Japanese woman, like a watercolor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Oh, Batman Infiltration. There are one or less characters on your backstage. This card cannot attack. All of your other characters get the following ability. This card cannot side attack. <laughs> yeah, so you need to have a full backstage for this to swing back after you change it from Grodd. I'm going to evaluate this like as if the 3-2 basically doesn't exist. This is... Because that's the only time when you really play this over the other one, I think. Um... The fact that it has natural anti-synergy with what Grodd wants to do, which is just side constantly, um, makes it a lot worse. However, it's a Batman, and it's a 6-5, which if you change into it, will clear their board and gives you that mix-up. It threatens the mix-up of either clearing your character because they don't have combo, and then they just have a body on the field, that they, you know, got out and popped the Grodd back. So it came out, like, basically for nothing but one stock. So this is, like, a 1-1, one, 6-5. One, or they let you crash into Grodd, and then they have a shitter to reverse with their combo. So I like that line of play from the card, but the card itself is just average. Like, it's just average. It has anti-synergy with Grodd and the side attacking. So, like... I don't know, C minus. It's a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of drawbacks on this card, and I think that it only ever useful when you're combining it with Grodd. Yeah. Grodd is a staple and is an every hero or weapon deck. Mm-hmm. So which right. would make this card a card in every weapon deck. I still think it's combo you're not playing the combo because you're getting a six five at level one you're playing the combo because grod's a good card so you might as well play this in some number yeah because it gives you the 4d chess right like you yeah. don't you don't want to be completely like if you're playing 4d chess with your opponent because you're both in the know and you're both kind of like snickering at each other like idiots while you side one each other one another for four turns um you want to at least like you know follow up on your threat sometimes so you keep your opponent guessing. Um, so I don't know. I think think of the format of Weiss too, though. It's best of one games. You know, it's not like multi tournament conditioning, minded. Andy. Multi tournament conditioning. You, you can't, you know, exact this strategy over the course of multiple games. I think if I'm not running that combo, if I'm not running Infiltration Batman, I'm just going to run four of the runner. Mm. Stupid game with my opponent. I think I'd rather run the Grod because it's better. In the end game, but yeah, maybe run like four runners and like two grods. Yeah, I think seeing I don't, I don't grod think I'd come down to four grods. Seeing grod come down on turn one when they're on the play is terrifying, though. Like that's like you're just like, oh, it's game on, it's it's go time. 
when it's you terrifying, stock. but is it better? It's not. It, w- w- would it be better to have a runner that doesn't cost you stock and still lives? Um, because you get the stock I mean, from better, the attack. I think the Catwoman's better in the early game, the runner, but if you're running the infiltration combo and can back up your threat... Well, think about it change. this way. If they hard mulligan for the combo, right? Or they threaten it, they have and they drop Grodd on the play. They have one stock, right? You side it because that's the correct play to do. Then they have one stock and they Ricky for whatever it is they threw away for a combo piece and they milled two. So like I think the fact that Grod the Grod play combined with the fact that the Ricky's so broken, um, because it can put Grod to like three five and maybe kill your thing that you put out there if it wasn't a runner. <laughs> Like, All the... right, well, well, here's another counter-argument to your counter-argument, Carmen. Okay. Saying that your strategy is to have a Grodd and then hard maul. Mm-hmm. Mulligan's the most important part of the game. Of any yeah. game of White Schwartz, I believe the most important part's the mulligan. Yeah. And what you're trying to maul for what? You're trying to maul for playable level zeros, your level one combo, and these other weird change targets, and your climax. You're, maul- you're trying to hard maul for everything. Do you need your climax? Everything. I guess if the, you don't need your climax if the three two is legal, but if it's not, you do. So yeah, if if the three two gets, I, I think you do. I think you do need a, your level one climax because even if the three two is legal, your opponent's gonna even more play around your grod, meaning you're just gonna have this trash card on your field that you have to. Yeah. That you have to get rid of eventually. This, yeah. I mean, this is, of course, just an initial impression. Like, we're, we'll see how the metagame develops. Yeah. And see, this Gorilla Grodd, Batman infiltration change really holds up. Yeah. I think that the Bat, clan, the Bat Clan part of it is far scarier than the Grodd part. The Grodd part has a lot of counterplay. The Bat Clan's a lot more uninteractive. All right, Next. Catwoman wife is you, Paul. Uh, level one, cost one. If the character facing this card is cost zero or lower, this card cannot become reversed. Another reverse dying, denying. Yeah. Um. It's not a Batman. I don't like it. Yeah, not a Batman. Um. Only a fifty-five. These cards do have value, but, like, I think the GGO one is far better. That's, like, a 1-1. One, one, it becomes an 8K, and it come, can't be bombed. And it's a shink card. Uh, this is just whoa, so much worse. Bad. And it's not a Batman. I'm with Andy. Big bad. Okay. Next, Next. card. But it has a waifu on it. It does have a waifu on it. Batman's the ultimate waifu, though. It's true. Let's be real. We love him. 2-1 Nightwing. 2-1 10k. If there are no markers under him, he gets minus 7,500. Jeez. In your hand, you can choose a Nightwing in your waiting room, put a face up underneath, and this is the same card that yeah, Revy had. It's the 2-1 two, two Soul. I can't wait for all of you to pass me this card yet again in draft. What, 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 I... did, what, did, we, what did we grade the other... Um, the, it's, the this card is bad because it requires you to have four cards to get it off, and you can only play two of them. That's the line. The line is that you can only at most play two of them, and they re- it requires you to run four. That's especially considering you already... I think this card's like a D-. minus. Especially, It's even worse than in Revue, because yeah, every single I deck agree. you could possibly build for Batman requires you to run some amount of dead or bad cards. You're running Sunder, you're running a whole bunch of garbage. If you're running the Gorilla Grodd, you're running a bunch of underwhelming level 1s and level 3s. Mm-hmm. Makes it even worse. You, have. you want to run uh, more than 4 Bat Clans. Yeah, I agree. He is not a Batman. Not a Batman. Things just stacking up. Just gets worse and worse. Have, a, have we given a card an F today? No. I, th- I think this is it. I think this is the F. That being said, I just, I just bl- want to. I I want to give an F to something. You think this is an F card? Yeah. No, it's probably a D minus, but I want to give it an F. I'm with Andy. It feels so good hitting that F key. After talking about Grodd so much, there's I I want blood. 
All right, next. Donning the mask. If you do not have a character with Batman in its name, this card cannot be played from hand. Search your deck for two weapon characters. Reveal them to your opponent. Put them in your hand. Shuffle your deck. One, two, event. If you're plussing off Grodd like a madman, this card ain't bad. <laughs> Get a bunch of free pluses from Grodd. Pay two. Search your combo. Go off. But in all other instances, it's bad. You have to have a lot of stock flow. It is at one, though. This is like the review card that we saw that searched two, but it was at uh, for what is it? He green Karen, but it was a two. It was two. some weird. It was two, a two event. Or it was a two one or something like that. That your opponent could play around. This is completely in your control. Yeah, I think this is like fine. I think I think the effects. I think the effects solid, but especially if you're spending all the stock on Gorilla Grods. Well, yeah, but it it's still the is threat a... of spending Grods. I mean, like. The threat gets you free stock, so you do have some stock to play with. This is a way for you to just get into your combo. But, like, is it... Is playing this card, like, playing... Saying you're playing more of your combo? I don't think so. I think it's costed correctly, though. It's costed and leveled correctly, which is in its favor. And I think that makes it, like, a solid C. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think so, too. It's... It's it's a solid one of I guess. If it's you definitely leveled and costed correctly, but it's not as good as saying this card is running more of your combo, which is what you're looking for with these kind of events, I think. All right, next card. All right, last card, Paul. All right, I like this one. <laughs> uh, level three, cost four, Quake Engine. If all players are level three or higher, all players must put all cards from their clock into their waiting room. Put this card in your. What the fuck? <laughs> This is a big what the fuck from me. Like, this what? Is, this is such a troll card. This is a troll if card. A, you know, if you're a 3-6 and, and you're about to uh, refresh, you just throw this out there. <laughs> this is just a meme. This is a meme. This is a what the fuck. This is dumber than the barrel. <laughs> oh my god. In all seriousness, though, this card's only bad if you're losing, right? Yeah. And then you probably don't have enough stock to deploy your finisher properly. Well, it's only good when you're losing. This is a, this is a Timmy this Trap card. card. This is a classic this Timmy card, Trap. This card's only good if you were at, like, 3-6 and you're going to lose to, like, well, refresh or something. And it's an like event. You can't you know. search it. I think that's another F. Yeah, this, it's, this card is... This card is what the fuck? Big F. Like, at the end. Um... This is a classic Timmy trap for people that value heals. Uh, that being said, heal and white sword is, is amazing. But it's not like Subaru, where Subaru is more stock intensive and resets the game, and then you also have a body that swings for three soul. This, this, is cost, this costs a million stock, and, and it's, it's an, an event, event card that you, you have to hold into it. your yeah, hand the whole game. So I don't get it, because it puts your opponent to, like... It also puts your opponent to 3-0. It resets three and gives your opponent initiatives really bad. All right. Yeah. I think I think that's all there is to say about this. It's it's a bad F game. plus. <laughs> what the fuck? An all right. F plus because it can sometimes win you a game. Yeah, F plus for meme. All right. That's blue, guys.